Our free flight space is really about connecting our visitors with the animals in the natural environment in general. The sort of ecosystems where they're found are still under the same sort of threats that we're seeing worldwide and there are a lot of really easy things that people can do because it takes everybody doing all the little things to make the big differences. All right. So walnuts are Qantas's favourite, so that's my high, high reward. Um, whereas I've got also some sunflower seeds. He gets that for the main part of the training, um, but then for harder behaviours, I'll give him the really good stuff for that. Qantas. Good boy. Great. I'm Shannon, I'm a member of the Animal Experiences team here at Auckland Zoo and today we are going to be working with a couple of our galahs uh, that we have here, training them for a free flight session and really building their confidence in our brand new space. The aim of our team is, is really to get those close connections with people that come to the zoo, which we hope will have them leaving feeling really excited about the animals that they've seen. Oh boy! Cool. Welcome to our free flight area. So this is Qantas. Uh, so he's one of four galahs that we have here at Auckland Zoo. And he is our newest out in the free flight area. He's doing really, really well. He hasn't had as much time as some of the others to explore all the different perches. Because in any scenario, when he is out free flying, we want him to have a lot of different areas in this space that he's comfortable landing on. We can never jump in the deep end and just let them out for free flight. What we need to do with each of our birds is build up a relationship. You can't just rely on the treats alone. There's a lot of different things going on out here, so we want to be the birds' safe zone. We need to trust the birds and they need to trust us in return. Yep. Good. So his role really in our free flight is advocacy for not just his own species, but the ecosystems where they're from, which is um, one of the really, really important parts about our free flight. Good boy. We're also working on a bit of a leaf retrieval. Now this is a newer behavior for Qantas. Yes. Yep. Good. Yes. Yep. Oh, so close. So the throwing of the leaf is often actually the cue for him, but if he doesn't respond uh, straight away to that, I have a hand signal and I say nest, and then I'm tapping the area I want him to go to, and then he gets a little sunflower seed when he does the right thing. Good. There you go, so he's building up his confidence with that already. It's a great way of educating our audience on some of the amazing natural adaptations of galahs in the wild. So in any of our training sessions, we always like to quit while we're ahead um, because of course they do have little bellies. <laughs> we don't want them to get chock-a-block full of seeds and yummy things like that. Good boy. Let's just see what the reaction is. Hey guys. Oh, good. Hi. How are you going? Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm team leader of Animal Experiences. Today we're working with Summer and Felix. They're blue and gold macaws, just over two and a half years old now. They are two of five macaws that we have that we work with for our displays. Summer and Felix are the youngest of the bunch, so they're right at the beginnings of their training. Good girl. All right, Summer, I really want to try and get her to do her coat retrieval. Yeah. If we can. Yeah. Okay. Today we're working on a slightly new behaviour, which is a clay retrieval. In the wild, blue and gold macaws would go and find clay and they would eat that. This behaviour will become part of our free flight displays and we can talk our visitors through uh, and they get to experience and see what macaws would do in the wild. So if this is our nest and we'll just kind of get him taking the clay to the nest. Nest? Yeah. Good! And then we'll just build up getting further and further away. Yeah. But I think what's important is that we don't, he doesn't associate this platform with it. Nest? Good. You'll see a few signals when we're doing our training. The start of the behavior is the macaw needs to pick up the piece of clay, which actually in this case is a small piece of wood. So if they just touch it, they get a reward. And then if they pick it up, they get a reward. And so we ask for a little bit more each time. Nah. Nest? Good! You got it. All right, we'll try from a different angle, shall we? Nest. They very quickly realize that they need to take the piece of clay and put it in the bowl, and then they'll get a treat. 
And then it's about making it more difficult. So it's moving the bowl around, it's asking them to go and get the clay first. Nest. Nest. Good girl. So the way that we go about training normally takes three obvious steps. We train the behavior in the aviary. Once they've done the behavior in the aviary, we then bring it outside but we can't just bring them outside because that in itself is a really new experience. What we do first is we bring them out into our training aviary, which basically changes their environment, gives them an opportunity to see uh, and hear new sort of sights and sounds of the zoo, gives them lots of different experiences, and then we retrain the behavior again, but we do it in this new environment. Felix, good boy. No two training sessions are ever the same. It's enriching for so many reasons. Any bird, any animal at the zoo, training can be a really interesting thing for them. And also it's up to them whether they participate. It's about offering them choice. So training it would be offering them puzzles to do, trying to get them thinking, trying to get them working things out. That's what they would have to do in the world every single day. And it's what, it's what we do. They, we all have to sort of look at our day and adapt to it. Oh, good boy. Hello, my name is Emma. The little animal that we're going to be working with today is Bo, and he is our rainbow lorikeet. One of the things I like about Bo is he is definitely a second chance story. Come on. Rainbow lorikeets should be found in Australia. They should not be found in New Zealand. However, Bo has a little bit of an interesting story because he once called the wild New Zealand his home. The only reason that could have happened is if he was an escaped or a released pet. Now luckily for us and New Zealand wildlife, Bo did not enjoy living wild. So he beeped and squeaked at the top of a tree until someone came over to investigate it. They contacted us and Bo got to call Auckland Zoo his home. From that point on, we've worked with him to build his confidence, to build his flight muscles, to really work at keeping him nice and enriched. Good boy. Now one of the things that we did want to work on today is one of our circles. We've brought it to a new environment. So we might have to break it down, we'll see. Circle. Yeah, Shannon, I think we're gonna need you to be the in-between stage. Have you just seen the camera? Is it very exciting? I thought it might be. Ready, circle. Good boy. So we're basically just bringing Shannon closer and closer to me to get to the point where he does a complete circle. Ready, circle. So the cue for him is, uh, is me saying the word circle, but also yeah. that is his cue as well. Circle. So at the moment, Bo is quite reluctant to do the circle. It could be for a variety of different reasons. He's kind of just taking a minute and I don't really want to ask him to fly until he looks like he's ready because he could get a little bit of a spook. Circle. I am out. So I think this is going to be our last one. Circle. He is going into our free flight encounter, so we don't want him to be too full. The idea when we're training our birds is that we don't want them to be so full that they don't want to fly, because it would be like me trying to fly or run straight after a great big huge Christmas dinner. I genuinely believe that our free flight displays are so important. You can feel the wind coming off their wings. Um, you can hear them. It's such a sensory experience. It's super immersive. Okay, hello everyone. For anybody that can hear my voice and is not already in our free flight area, feel free to make your way on over. We are going to be starting our morning free flight display in about five minutes time. I'm just setting up for our first bird. It's a little bit of a puzzle sometimes depending on what sort of order we have our birds in because some birds are okay with the flowers being out, some can't have the flowers being out, some need the tea bar, some don't need the tea bar, some need leaves. No mai, hairi mai, ki te whare, kararehe, o tamaki makaurau. Hi everyone, welcome to Auckland Zoom. You guys have an important role to play today, so you are our forest canopy, all right? So our birds are gonna be flying pretty close to you. They are gonna be flying over your heads. Some of them are gonna be weaving between your heads. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good response. Okay then, we are gonna bring out our very first bird. Here he is with Lizzie. Everybody say hello to Qantas Al Galar. These guys are pretty special, so cockatoos are a type of bird that they like to live in tree hollows, but galahs are a little bit different and they actually line their nest with leaves. So they are the only cockatoo species that does this. So that is what Qantas is doing right now. You can see we've given him a little wooden leaf, so if we just use normal leaves, it'd be a little bit hard for him to know when to stop. 
Galahs are actually one of my favourite. Sometimes they are upside down, they've got their wings out, they're screaming, flapping. It seems almost like a waste of energy where most animals conserve energy. That's where the term being a bit of a galah comes from. I see it more as a positive. It's kind of being full of energy is probably the polite way to put it. Alrighty, we are going to set up for our very next bird and this is when our beautiful flowers come into play. I should mention that for this particular bird, it is also breeding season currently. So he does love his flowers, so often when people think of pollinators, they think of bees, bumblebees, things like that. But pollinators can come in a range of different species. A lot of birds do pollinating like bow. We've got our very own pollinators here as well. Is anyone able to think of one? Starts with a T. Yeah? Tui, yeah, exactly. Coming up with the pollination idea as a team was super fun. So we went to speak to our maintenance team. I gave them some kind of clue as to what I want. I want big flowers, I want about this big, I want huge petals, a little cup in the middle so that the bird can eat the food. So we have lots of big flowers all set up and then Bo will fly from each one which helps us to explain cross-pollination. And what we actually feed him is nectar in a little syringe. So he flies from flower to flower eating the nectar he would naturally find in those flowers. Yeah, so that will be it for Bo. We'll say a little wave to Bo if you want to say bye to him. Now these very next birds are pretty exciting. These are the ones that I was talking about at the start that may look like they're coming straight for your face. You may just feel your fringe brush aside as they majestically fly past. So these guys do need our help. One easy way you can help is by trying to choose sustainable wood products. But I've got a really easy way of doing it. So wood products can be anything, big things like furniture, but even the next time you buy your toilet paper, that's a wood product. What you can have a look for is one of these logos. So we've got FSC, the other one, is the PEFC. You know it's a good one to choose because it does not come from any animal's habitat in the wild. I personally think there is nothing more important than connecting people to wildlife. How can you protect something you've never had contact with? How can you want to love something you've never seen? It's so important to get those little connections early so that we can protect the planet that we all call home. All right, so we have one last bird. Now we've had some pretty small birds so far. I'm about to show you our biggest bird that we have here. He... <laughs> That's a suitable reaction, I like that reaction. Their intelligence is actually about the same intelligence as a three-year-old child. So very, very good problem solvers. Now Jake, he is about nine years old. Uh, they normally live for about 80 years. Don't really recommend them for a pet because if you think about it, it's kind of like having a three-year-old live with you for 80 years. <laughs> a very, very loud, destructive three-year-old. <laughs> Macaws are an amazing bird to have in our displays. They have a really strong conservation message. It is the case now that that rainforest is disappearing. And we can ask our visitors to look at these birds, be excited by them, realize that that species is out in the rainforest and it needs our help. If you learn to love something, an animal, if you love a plant, if you love anything at all, chances are when you have an opportunity to make a choice that will look after that animal, then you'll make a good choice. And that usually comes from really, really just thinking they're brilliant. All right, guys. So that is our last bird of the day. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the day here at Auckland Zoo. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Today. He's so cool. I love Jay. He has four fingers oh, on each side. Hi, I'm Molly. I think it was really cool. I really like the parrots like flipping around on the rope. They're one of my favourite species, definitely. And my third favourite animal is a parrot. My name's Boston and my favourite part was when we saw the jack and he flew right over my head. It felt all soft and like, like my pillow. I'm Fiona, I'm Nicole, and this I'm is Holly. Holly. <laughs> One of the messages was about uh, conservation. I didn't realise those logos were sustainable logos, so that's something I'll take away from this. Yep, Just definitely. try and look for a logo when you're in the supermarket, which is pretty easy. Auckland Zoo is such a special resource, and just turning up is uh, something that you can do to help. And it's always more personal when you see them up close, get a bit of respect for them, a bit of awe and sort of a, an affection for them, and that does give you a compassion and an empathy that you wouldn't otherwise have. There are sometimes just very small things that we can do that can make a huge difference to them.